watching ENTV. Hello everyone, welcome back to our conference championship edition of Hard Hitters for the 2022 to 2023 NFL season. I'm your host this week, Carson Zorn, joined with Ryan Israel, Nick Aslan, Sean Kelly. So, a lot happened in the divisional round last week. There were some very interesting games, uh, and then there was Giants-Eagles, which was just a complete blowout, so we're not even going to mention that one. Uh, Chiefs-Jaguars was also interesting, but really tapered off there in the second half, so we're going to start with maybe the most unexpected outcome of the week, and that's not exactly who won, but it's just the way the game went, and that is the Cincinnati Bengals beating the Buffalo Bills 27-10 to in Highmark Stadium in a downpour of snow. What were your thoughts on that, Ryan? Um, you know, Josh Allen, he's had turnover problems this season. I believe he leads the league in total turnovers right now. Uh, and that's what killed the Bills in that game. He couldn't keep the ball on offense, and the Bengals are a really strong offense, and if you give them the ball, they're going to score. And Josh Allen kept giving the ball to the Bengals, and that is not a good way to win a football game. Yeah, um, I mean, right from the start, the Bengals just picked up where they left off in the Week 17 matchup. I mean... That's what I predicted. I mean, your, your reverse jinx works, Carson, yeah. but that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Like, the Bengals were just going to pick up where they left off, off, and that power offense just kept moving the ball. Burrow and Chase connection was great all game. Yeah, the, the Bengals were able to just move the ball down the field the entire game without any problems at all. The, the Bills had no connections at all. Like, Josh Allen could not throw it to any of the receivers. Diggs was nowhere to be found the entire game. So, yeah, the, the Bengals just had no problem moving it, and their defense was flying all over the field. Yeah, it was a very interesting game to watch as a Bengals fan because every Bengals playoff game I've seen in my lifetime has either been a loss or a very close win, and that was the first time I've ever been able to watch a Bengals playoff game and just kind of relax in the second half, which was really weird because the Bills were not the team I was thinking I would be able to do that against because I knew Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs have that connection, but... Between Eli Apple and then rookie Cam Taylor Britt, they blocked down Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis, which is not something I ever expected to say, especially about Eli Apple. As um, a previous host, Sarah Mankiewicz, likes to say, uh, an Eli Apple a day keeps the Super Bowl away. But my question for Sarah is when Eli Apple wins Super Bowl MVP, what then? So just get ready for that. And now going on over to the NFC Divisional Round, as I already said, we're going to ignore Giants-Eagles because I actually ignored that game too after the Eagles went up about 21 points. So we'll talk about the Dallas Cowboys taking on the San Francisco 49ers, the 49ers winning 19-12 to in what was kind of a slugfest, a very old-fashioned defensive game of football, multiple turnovers by Dak Prescott. What'd you see in that game, Ryan? Uh, I think the elephant in the room that needs to be addressed with this game is the horrendous final play call by the Dallas Cowboys. Not only that they came out in whatever you want to call that formation with Zeke at center and no other offensive linemen, but the fact that they came out in that formation, the 49ers called a timeout, and then the Dallas Cowboys chose to once again come out in that formation. They had a chance to call a regular play. Instead, they had no offensive linemen and no receivers run past the first down marker even. They weren't going down the field. <laughs> I don't know what their plan was. Yeah, um, like Kevin Rollins said last week and the week before, uh, the Stephen A quote, uh, they'll let you down in due time. And boy, did they let us down <laughs> <laughs> with that final play. I mean... We spoke about it. Mike McCarthy is one of the biggest liabilities for that team other than Dak Prescott. Um, and and he showed it. And that makes me very happy that he is not a uh, Green Bay Packer head coach anymore. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it at that. Shannon had play, great play calling throughout the game. The Kittle had that great catch at the end of the game, the, yeah. that last drive. It was basically the Kittle drive, as they were calling it on TV. He, had that, he also caused that pass interference at like yeah. the three-yard line, got, got them down there. So, yeah, the Niners just were able to play defensive style and their brand of football and win the game. Alrighty, now moving on to our conference championship round predictions. We're going to start in the NFC because that is the first game on Sunday at 3 o'clock. We have the San Francisco 49ers, the two seed, taking on the one seeded Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. Ryan, this is going to be a great matchup. What do you got for this game? So, the story of this game coming into it is going to be the injuries. Now, especially for the 49ers, you have three major offensive weapons that have been on the injury report all week. 
Christian McCaffrey has not practiced all week. Elijah Mitchell has not practiced all week. The 49ers run game is such a big part of their offense that even though both these players and Shanahan say they're going to play on Sunday, they're probably not going to be at 100%. And Debo Samuel, who they would often line up at running back when they had to, has been limited all week with an ankle injury. Now, I do have the 49ers winning this game purely because that defense has been able to shut down everything. The 49ers defense is a complete lockdown. Now, the Eagles have an incredible offensive line, right? You know, uh, Jason Kelsey, Jordan Mailata, every everybody on the Eagles offensive line is incredible. Nick Bosa is all I have to say. I'm going to take the Eagles here. You know, the 49ers defense has been absolutely incredible, but so has that uh, Philadelphia Eagles offense. And Jalen Hurts looked really back to his, his form last week against the Giants after not looking so great after his injury. And, you know, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, and Devonta Smith, they've been playing incredible this season. And they're playing in Philadelphia, which is always a tough place to play. The fans are going to be insane. Um, I just, I have to roll with the Eagles here. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that Jalen Hurts has been the best dual threat quarterback in the league this year, at least. I know there's a lot of, you know, talk about whether or not he deserves MVP. I don't think he'll win it. I think it's going to Mahomes, but people forget that Hurts was on the MVP trail before he got injured, and then people were saying, oh, it won't matter. The Eagles are still going to win. Guess what? They lost without Jalen Hurts, and that's the definition of MVP is you're the most valuable player to your team. My biggest question with the 49ers is Brock Purdy. He's been playing very well. I'm going to give him his roses. He has not been bad whatsoever. But part of me wonders how much of that is Shanahan's system and the offensive weapons that are there. And I've said it since the playoffs started, and I'm going to say it again. I think at a point, having Mr. Irrelevant as your starting quarterback will catch up to you. I think that at a point, that will catch up to you. But I don't think it's this week. I think it happens in the Super Bowl. I'm picking the Niners. I don't feel great about it, but I'm picking the Niners to beat the Eagles by a field goal. Uh, last second field goal, most likely. George Kittle maybe has another Kittle drive to get him in the field goal range. Uh, but I just think that 49ers offense is just to be a little too much for that Philadelphia defense. All right, now we're moving on to the big one that you know, is, is being played at a neutral site. It's Chiefs versus Bills, you know, just like the NFL wanted. No, the Bengals went in and said, no, that's not happening. No neutral site AFC championship game. We've got the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Arrowhead Stadium, or as it's better called, Burrowhead Stadium, uh, to take on the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Joe Burrow has never lost a game to Patrick Mahomes. Does it happen this week? Mahomes is injured. He had a high ankle sprain last week uh, that made him miss uh, a quarter, a uh, full quarter, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, against the Jaguars, uh, but then the Chiefs training staff gave him about enough tramadol to kill a horse, <laughs> and he came back into the game, finished it out strong, and they ended up winning against the Jaguars. I still think that the Bengals and McPherson and Burrow and that amazing wide receiver room are going to find some way to get it done like they've been doing the past two years. And I don't think the Chiefs fans are going to give him a problem. He went into Arrowhead last year and came back from a 21-3 deficit at halftime and went to the Super Bowl. And I don't think he's going to have to do that again. I don't think the Bengals are going to have to come back from some crazy deficit. I think they're going to be able to hold off the Chiefs for pretty much all of the game. It's going to be close, but I think the Bengals are going to be holding the lead the entire game. Uh, sorry, Carson. But I'm gonna roll with the Chiefs here, you know. <coughs> Nine and eight, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, every game between Mahomes and Burrow has been decided by three points, and I think a lot of this game comes down to Andy Reid versus Zach Taylor, and I'm gonna take Andy Reid every time. I, I think something's Bengals. gonna catch up to the Bengals this week, and that thing catching up is gonna be Andy Reid. Um, I do think Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, despite Patrick Mahomes' injury, I don't think it's going to impact him that much. Kind of like Brian said, he's going to be hopped up on a bunch of medication. He's not going to even feel that ankle. He's going to be out there flying around the field like he always does. And I have the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes finally beating Burrow and the Bengals. Yeah, I've been going back and forth with this one all week. I do have the Bengals winning this game. It's going to be close, of course, like every other game has been with them. But I think the, the Bengals offense is the key difference maker. They have the better receiver core by far. They have the best receiving core in the NFL. 
in my opinion. Uh, they have the better run game, and they have, for this game, I believe, the better quarterback, just because Mahomes is injured. He will, he will be good enough to play well, but I think Burrow has advantage in this one. Yeah, Bengals fans, I know I represent you on here, so I just want to apologize to you that I picked the Bills last week, but I also want to say it was a reverse jinx and it worked, so you're welcome. But I'm sorry that I ever had to put you through that. I'm not doing the same thing this week. I'm picking the Bengals to win through and through. When your number one receiving threat goes from Tyreek Hill to Travis Kelsey, sure, the Chiefs have a good wide receiver room. They have Juju, they have MVS, they have Sky Moore. It's not that there isn't talent in that receiver room. But all year, all I've heard is that Mahomes did all this without a number one receiver. Yes, he does have a number one wide receiver. It's the best tight end in football. You can't act like that doesn't exist. So yeah, Kelsey will get some yards, but I think Trey Flowers is going to make his day really hard. And this last time the Bengals played the Chiefs, the Bengals won, and that was with Jamar Chase on his first game back from a hamstring and hip injury. Joe Mixon wasn't playing. We were missing multiple starters on defense, and we still won that game. But I actually think this game is going to be a very big T. Higgins game. T. Higgins has been very quiet throughout this playoffs. Jamar Chase has been putting up the numbers. I think the Chiefs are kind of tired of getting burned by Chase because he averages literally 139 yards per game against them when he plays them. I think they're getting tired of burned by him, so they're going to double him, and that's going to leave T. Higgins wide open all game long. So, Bengals fans, I got you this week. I got me this week. Joe Burr, Joe Shiesty, as it says on the shirt, is going to defeat Patrick Mahomes for the fourth time in a row. All right, thank you all so much for watching our conference championship edition of Hard Hitters. Check in next week to see how we did, and then we'll see what happens in the Super Bowl.